Hi, Skincare Lovelies. We're going to chat a little bit about what drives your melasma um, on the daily. So that's sun. And sun is something we really can't avoid. So something we have to learn to shield effectively from. Um, and sunscreen, we know, is, is standard. And the UV protection you're looking for on your sunscreen is usually that SPF. But SPF is essentially protecting you from the UVB component. So when you're looking out for your sunscreen, I want you to please look out for something that has a UVA cover as well as visible light protection. And this is really important, especially in people with deeper skin tones, because we're starting to understand that the visible light spectrum from the sun component actually drives a much more deep-seated, longer sitting pigmentation. So what protects us from the visible light component? These are the physical um, ingredients or actives in your sunscreen including zinc oxide, titanium oxide, iron oxide. So look to ingredients that have the physical component in terms of protection. Now aside from that you want on adequate dosage of your sunscreen. What does that mean? So adequate dosage at a minimum is please two finger lengths of sunscreen on the face and again you're going to remember to be mindful about protection to the neck the ears the eyelids effectively if you're outdoors remember your sunscreen does not last the entire day as you perspire it's coming away so please reapplication and then if you're in water the sunscreen is coming away even sooner so outdoors every two hours for reapplication in water every 90 minutes Aside from that, uh, to be mindful that things like air pollution can also drive your pigment cell activity. So how do we protect from air pollution? Well, what air pollution is doing in the skin is offsetting reactive oxygen species and how we stop or prevent those uh, uh, reactive oxygen species from causing inflammation in the skin and driving pigmentation is by using an antioxidant. And the most helpful antioxidant you're going to find here is something called vitamin C and you want that in a formulation of L-ascorbic acid and ideally you want that formulation somewhere between 10 to 20 percent to be meaningful. You also want the pH to be less than 3. Uh, so compounding of your C is super important in terms of efficacy. Right, moving away from that is fragrance. So when you are spraying on your perfume, make sure you're mindful away from face because that can be airborne getting onto the face and causing sun sensitivity. But aside from that, look to your makeup ingredients as well because if there is perfume in makeup, that can also drive the sun sensitization process. Aside from that, you'll find certain oral medication can also drive sun sensitivity. These include medications like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, so maybe the brufen class, ibuprofen for instance, um, even hormonal treatment. So estrogen containing pills, progesterone containing intrauterine devices, be mindful there that they can promote progression of your pigmentation. And then lastly, be careful with any treatment to your face and these even include your cosmetic procedures so say you're getting uh, your hair removed and that's a wax process you use the heat from the wax can offset the pigmentation so please no wax to the face if you're prone to pigmentation or melasma you may also have certain laser procedures done be mindful that although certain lasers with certain energy settings can be safe to use and helpful to use for melasma there are other lasers that are used for different indications that may offset your melasma uh, progression. For example, if you're using a laser maybe for acne reduction, be mindful of settings, especially in the deeper skin tones. After you've had any procedures done, you must protect the skin because the skin cells or the pigment cells at that time are especially sensitive to stimulation. So you want to be mindful about no unnecessary sun exposure. You want to be mindful about having your sunscreen on key in terms of dosage as well as reapplication. I hope you find those tips helpful. If you do, please like, subscribe and follow. Leave your comments in uh, the section below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the content or you can contact us at the Dermatology Room. Keep well, skin care lovelies.